my name is Jean Mario Scotti. This is Sofia Nielsen, and this is Marcus Hapala. We are researchers at the Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Helsinki in Finland. Our research involves microreactors for the chemical analysis of chemical reactions by mass, uh, mass spectrometry. Sorry. Um, in this video, we want to present our 3D printed microreactor. Uh, this microreactor has been 3D printed for, from polypropylene, which is uh, an inert um, plastic material. Here you can see two versions of our microreactor. During the printing of the microreactor, we have inserted a stir bar and a nano electrospray needle, which is basically the ion source of our microreactor. And the reaction that we chose to study uh, with this uh, 3D printed microreactor is a DL Salder and Retro DL Salder reaction that is occurring between this transcyclooctane and the tetracine here. And the very high strain of the double bond of the transcyclooctane is making the reaction relatively fast and energetically favor favored. And um, we are then, by losing nitrogen gas, uh, forming this final product here in blue. So we attach this microreactor using the nano electrostray needle to a mass spectrometer so that we can monitor this reaction online with the mass spectrometer. But it means that we can monitor how these different species of the reaction evolve during time and we can plot these diagrams showing, for example, how the product increases over time. We are now in the lab with all the 3D printers that we have. This is the FDM printer with which we are printing our microreactor. It has a polypropylene filament loaded and we are printing on a polypropylene platform. The material of this platform is important and in this case it is polypropylene because with other uh, platform materials adhesion of polypropylene is extremely poor. One of the advantages of FDM printing is that we can interrupt the printing process at any time. Right now we will insert the stir bar into our micromixer. I will pause the printing from here. Then I will raise the print head 10 centimeters from the platform. Insert the stir bar into the chamber and continue printing and we inserted the nanospray needle exactly like this also. We are now in our mass spectrometry lab where our experimental setup is. Um, here uh, you see, of course, our mass spectrometer, it's an ion trap, and attached to it is our microreactor. The microreactor is inserted in a measurement jig that is connected to these uh, syringes. All right, this uh, measurement jig has also been 3D printed. So this project has uh, saved a lot of money by 3D printing not only the microreactor, but also part of the experimental instrumentation. Now let me just add that uh, the activator for the steering bar is just a simple computer fan. Here this fan is attached uh, to a lab power supply. This other lab power supply is actually a high voltage power supply which is used for the electrospray. Yeah, so we carry out the experiment by filling these two syringes with reactants. So we have tetracine in one of the syringes and transcyclooctane in the other syringe. Then we start the infusion so that we fill the reaction chamber of the chip, stop the infusion, start the recording of the mass spectrum, and also turn on the voltage supply so that we achieve steering of the steer bar. And then we continuously monitor what is happening within the reaction chamber with the mass spectra, uh, with recording a mass spectrum. And uh, by the electrospray here, we are pulling the liquid from the reaction chamber, so we don't need any uh, external pump 
rehearsal to get the liquid into the mass spectrometer and analyze it. And uh, then we obtain an extracted ion profile of the two starting materials. Uh, here the tetracine showed in red and the tracyclooctane showed in black. And over time we can see an increase of the extracted ion profile of the Diels Alder uh, cycloadduct product, uh, which is showed here in blue. So we can see that that one increases over time while the starting materials decrease over time. And uh, if we average a specific time point of the total ion chromatogram, uh, we obtain a mass spectrum where we can see the transcyclooctane as a peak here, uh, the tetracine as a peak here, uh, the final product as a peak here, uh, a product here which is uh, a fragment of the final product being formed in the ionization process, and also a doubly charged uh, molecule of the product uh, being manifested as a peak here. Thank you very much for watching our video. And if you are curious to learn more, you can find the link to the research article in the description.